welcome to Take Radio. Today we're looking at the Dizzy Rig mobile device. We're going to get it set up by the Zagu. Zagu. Zaigu? Let's just call it the G90. We're going to get it set up on the G90 with FT8 on Take Radio. So play that awesome intro video. A quick shout out to all my Patreons who make this show possible. You can support me by joining Patreon in the link below. And on to Take Radio! It is here! Let's unpack it! Hehe, <laughs> cables. Alright, the kit I got is for the G90. So, it comes with three cables for the G90. It has the USB cable, the DigiRig Mobile, we're gonna look at that later. I bet this is the cable to the radio and I think this plugs into the computer. I also have the four state QRP dummy load that I built in the last video. Check out the description somewhere there, there, there. And we're gonna be transmitting or test transmitting into the dummy load to see if we got to set it up correctly. Ha <laughs> ha, smart. Let's go ahead and unwrap this baby and see what he looks like. Audio, serial, USB. I think this is so simple, Frank can do it. That is amazing how small that is. Really good design. So let's go ahead and just do it. USB device, audio cable. Now I do have a question and I bet it's gonna be answered later. There's two different types of audio connectors here. Both of them are the 3.5 millimeter audio connector, but this is the four connection. All right, this is four and this is the three connection. I don't know which one goes where, but on the audio connection here, we have the four band and this goes to the radio. The audio cable is this large plug. So that's gonna go on the back of the radio right here. And then the other end of the 3.5 millimeter is gonna go into the audio port on the DigiRig. Finally, the serial port, put the four port into the serial line into the DigiRig, then into the serial port with the man with the circle over his head onto the G90. And that's it, it's that simple. That's all the wiring you need to do for the DigiRig. Next, we're gonna be setting up the computer settings and the settings for the radio. Let's go ahead and look at the webpage. We are looking for the AGC button on the screen. Now we're gonna push it until it says AGC F or AGC S. All right, now we're in AGC A mode. There's the button, found the button here and we're going to press it, AGC S. Next on the G90, we're gonna hold the function button until the menu system comes up. We're gonna hold the function button until the screen opens. Ah, that did it. We're gonna hold the function button and then we're going to move through the menu until it says, actually we're gonna use previous. There we go. And then we wanna set the main volume to 10. And then finally, we're gonna click save. Perfect. Let's go ahead and go to Windows and let's plug in the USB device. And it's telling me I got a new generic device ready to set up. We're going to go to control panel and then sound settings and it's showing me all my audio devices right now and if you haven't done it already it wants you to set this as audio default communication device and set as audio but this will take away my microphone we might be good we might get into a little trouble later when it tries to use the mic but i'm using this mic to talk to you. Oh, it wants us to change the name so we can go to properties and name configuration. We could type DigiRig. Use as default. Yes. Okay. Perfect. This next part confused me just a little bit. Um, it's talking about the in the DigiRig recording settings, and I thought that was referring to the DigiRig software itself. It does not. It's the recording settings still within sound properties right here. So uh, in the DigiRig microphone, go to the USB plug and play device and go to properties. And it's talking about if you want to patch or if you want to listen to what your audio is, this is the inside a listen. You want to check listen to this device took me a minute to find it and understand what I was saying, but that's okay. Uh, now we know, and now you know. 
Next is going to custom and it wants us to uncheck the AGC. Then go to the microphone levels and put it at 20%. Okay. Adjust the audio levels. So open up your software, which I just installed. On WSJT6, on, on WSJTX, we're going to go to File and Settings. And then Audio. Down Input, we're going to choose the DigiRig is not here it has to be that USB I thought I renamed it I guess it did not stay and the same thing the USB input plug-and-play device since it's the only microphone audio I have it's showing left on both of these so we're going to do left here is my receive side find the receive signal indicator scope or waterfall using the level slider for the previous screen Adjust the audio level so it's just above the territory. Hmm. This is not going to work with a dummy load. But the previous screen it's talking about is the microphone setting screen. We're going to cheat and go to sound settings. Let it load. And under input, go to properties and adjust this. I haven't plugged it into the radio. So it will help if you plug it into the radio. Oh, it got my frequency. Look at that. Or that's just the default. <laughs> and just for the heck of it, let's go ahead and raise it up a little bit more. I'm going to leave it there for now. I know I'm going to have to go back and test it once I'm actually on an actual antenna. But right now, it seems to be fine. We're going to err on the side of caution. And moving on. Next, we're going to go back to the G90. Press the function button once, with the function light lit up, then we're going to push the power button until we see mic input, and then we're going to rotate this, here we go, mic to line, and that's going to tell it to, it's going to operating from the line in device, push in on that knob, and it's selected. Since we're at this power level anyways, we're going to push that once, and we're going to turn it down to 5 watts for my dummy load, just to be safe. Following the instructions here, on the G90, step 2.4 is automatically enabled. Woot! We can adjust the slider, and it'll adjust the transmit power, or transmit gain. Just put it there. And I think that's almost it. So I'm going to go ahead and try to transmit here real fast get it to transmit something and then we'll call it success enable transmit is enabled this is the part I keep finding annoying waiting for the uh, transmit side to roll through all right we are transmitting and I am seeing nothing on my dummy load well I usually like to troubleshoot with you so you see the process see the things that don't work and so you know what things I've tried so you don't try them yourself but that went on for hours and we're not gonna do it I did reach out to DigiRig and they helped me out on the key thing I was missing from yesterday I had the majority of the settings all right I did not use OmniRig so let me go ahead and show you how to get that set up while we wait for OmniRig to load, I have the link in the description below for OmniRig to go ahead and download and install it yourself. The key fact with DigiRig, the rig type that you're going to need is the IC756 Pro. Then after that, the majority of the information below is, should be correct. I did have to change the RST to low and the DTR to high. Um, I think everything else is standard. I might have jumped the bit rate of uh, baud rate up a bit, but that should be fine. I don't know the answer to this. After you change the setting with OmniRig, do you have to close the program? Does it auto update? I don't know. There's no apply, just OK. Cl OK closes the program and you got to relaunch it. A key note though, you need to be running OmniRig in the background as you launch WSJTX. So let me go ahead and launch that now. And for y'all, I'm going to go ahead and clear the settings out of WSJT, and we're going to do it together. I hope I don't regret this. And here we go. I'm just going to turn it off monitoring. 
because you know it's still connected to that dummy load and we're gonna go to settings put your call sign in I hope you all know my call sign by now and I'm just gonna make up a grid next we're gonna go to the rig since we're using the Omni rig software we're gonna go ahead and look for Omni rig 1 and that's to match tab 1 settings we have here and then we're going to change it to cat control and I believe you don't need to touch any of the other settings and then we're going to go ahead and click test oops ah, I didn't set up the audio information just like yesterday we're going to go ahead and choose the USB plug and play device and then we're going to also change these to left let's actually go back here cat turns green or right, we're going to click test TT or that's going to be testing push to talk and my light on the radio turns on to also to test the cat control we are going to push change bands we're going to go ahead and change it to 40 since we're on 20 right now boom it changed woot um also turn off monitor because we're still plugged into that dummy load and finally we're going to hit tune and this should give us power to my dummy load and we'll see it light up here we go Look at that! Look at that! The lights! The lights! Tune again, they turn off, my rig turns off. Beautiful! I'm set up for FT8. Um, you... The only thing left is go through and set up in the field and play some FT8. Thank you to all my Patreon supporters. You can support me on Patreon. There is a link in the description below. And to all my tankers out there, go forth and conquer.